The next episode of Children of Heroes took us all the way to Exeter in Devon, where we interviewed Madame Antoinette Foreman, daughter of Flight Sergeant Karel Mazurek. Thank you for participating in our project Children of Heroes. Your father served in the Royal Air Force during the Second World War. Could you tell us more about him? My father was a young, dashing, handsome pilot when my mother met him, and he came here from um, Veltruzzi outside Prague. Uh, like a lot of young Czechs at that time, he joined the Foreign Legion in order to be able to come and join the um, Royal Air Force, where they had to train to be pilots and to learn English, of course. Um, he was a very brave man and he was awarded a Distinguished Flying Medal. Um, and then, of course, my mother, we were, he, we had, my sister was born here as well. And then we went to live in Veltruzzi. And my mother at the time, when I think about it, Czechoslovakia was not a known place to people in, in England, you know, to a, a young woman from Cornwall. And so I think she was very brave to just go. And, and uh, we made a life there. Um, with other friends who you may have contacted, Stefan Waldinger was one of our good friends. And uh, we lived there and settled down. And then when the communists came in, we had to, to leave quickly. We left separately. And again, I think my mother was quite brave because she was told that, you know, you must leave. So she left all the things she'd taken. And she was a woman who loved beautiful clothes and she'd taken clothes, she left those. And we came back separately. So my, we came and, and went and lived in Newton Abbott. Um, and then my father came over later. When, and so there was a, a time when it was a, a real concern, would, would they see each other again? But they did. Yeah. And how important was it for him to receive this Distinguished Flying Medal for his service? Well, he was very modest. And, and didn't really um, talk very much about it. But I think he was very proud. Um, and uh, from what he tells me, they learned um, amazingly to, to go on missions and have hardly any sleep and come back and go again. And of course, they were all young, very young. You know, he didn't say why. I don't know what, what he did to get the Distinguished Flying Medal, but nevertheless, he got it. I just wish he'd been able to say a little bit more about his life, you know, as a pilot. I think he was very brave, but he was very modest as well. And where he's, um, after he died, he was buried in Brookwood Cemetery with all the other Czechs, and they're all together. Um, but it's, it's sad to see, you know, that they were away from the country that they loved. And I don't know, I'm sure you've seen the film, The Dark Blue World. And that story is like the story of my dad, really, especially the bit at the, at the beginning where these poor Czech pilots had to learn English and they had to, you know, go around on bicycles and all that sort of thing. As I said, he was very modest. He stayed in touch with a lot of other Czech friends and we used to go to the Czech club in West Hampstead mm -hmm. and meet up. And there they used to talk a lot, I think, about what had happened and how, it affected different people differently. You know, uh, he made a, an, another life for himself and was happy, but for some of them, they didn't. It was a difficult time. Unlike the Poles who seemed to, they had Polish schools and Polish churches and things and had a, a different way of dealing with being away from their country. My father and myself, we, we, had a, we had a very close relationship. He loved the fact that I enjoyed cooking and I still cooked Czech food for him. Oh. So I could, I could make Svishkova and um, I could make um, Knedliki and also Bukti. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, which I haven't made for a long time, but it's I... but poppy I, or... Uh, sorry? A bit poppy. Poppy, yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then Povidla inside, uh -huh. yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so I do have a feel, a real connection. I'm sorry that we've lost touch. Once my um, uncle Vracha, uh, whose funeral I went to in Prague, um, and my auntie died, we've not kept in touch with the younger generation, um, which is a shame, but um, it's like, it, there it is, you know. These are when we actually live there. That's, that's me in the pram. <laughs> That's me, yeah, yeah, my sister, my mother, 
with her nice dresses and the little baskety pram coming over here I felt for a long time very out of place. Um, I came to a, I went, was sent to the primary school here and made best friends with uh, a, a girl called Marisha Komorowski and of course we felt two strangers together, that's why we were friends. First of all because I had to learn English and um, sadly because of the way it was where we had to, we were just went to different relatives, you know, whoever could put us up, so that my mother and father's marriage didn't last, didn't survive that. And uh, when I was about 11, they separated. And he went on eventually to have an, an, another family and a, another two daughters. Um, but after, we always stayed in touch, and after the Dubček um, regime, we were able to go back and visit our relatives, so we went back quite frequently. Um, but we were reg regular visitors. Um, the only sad thing was when my father died, it was quite difficult for Vracha to come to the funeral. They, he did come, but they put sort of obstacles in his way, but he, he came nevertheless. One of the most difficult things was just not feeling as though you fitted, and not having a, a permanent home when you're reliant on the kindness of, of relatives, which they were all kind, but you nevertheless move from place to place, you know. So um, consequently, when I grew up, when I got older, um, I think that's probably why I married so young, because I wanted to have a secure home for, my, for myself, you know, I think. But during your married life, yes. you have lived in oh, 11, different 11 different places. places. Yes, what yes. The well, the it? reason for that was um, w when I met my husband, he was, um, he just joined a large insurance company as a clerk. And he was one of those men who worked his way right up, you know, and he became a member of the board and a chief executive. And it was through those moves as he progressed in his career, which meant that I, I didn't go to college until I was 40 and the children were a little bit older. And then I went to college up in Yorkshire and became a youth and community worker. And then I was able to start having a career, which ended up as being um, a national advisor for the Church of England, which was really exciting. <laughs> The reason I was very drawn to working with young people was because I recognised how they felt, you know, f feeling a bit, everything a bit difficult. Mm -hmm. And I could relate to those feelings. And I had a, a really, a lovely time um, as, a, as, first of all, as what they called a, a full-time youth worker, running a big youth centre. And then um, when I became more on the management side, and then I went to the Church of England at Church House in Westminster. And that was fascinating. <laughs> and what led you to Church of England? Um, oh, well, of course, we were baptised Roman Catholics, um, being Czechs. Um, but no, when I, it was a very ordinary story, really. When I was in Shaldon um, at the primary school, wanting to fit in, um, the, the Roman Catholic Church was a tiny inner house. And the Anglican church was a big church with incense and bells and things. And my friend said, oh, you must come with me. So I went with her and I never... It, so it wasn't a, a conscious theological sort of reply. It was a wanting to fit in, I think. But I've been very happy there and, and I've had... Um, I still do a lot of work for the church. I've retired from being the National Youth Officer quite a long time ago. I was elected to serve on their governing body, the, the General Synod. And I served there for nearly 20 years, but I've come off that now. And um, what I do now is, is locally, I'm on what they call the Bishop's Council. Um, and uh, so I'm just involved in the structures, not as much as I was, but appropriate for the, for the you know, the, the amount of time that I can offer and, and what they need. I inherited from my father a love of arts, of music, and of arts, because he played the violin. Um, and so my great love, and, and that of my late husband, was um, art and also opera. That's my great love. And at the moment, that's what I'm very exercised with, because I'm chair of a group called Devon Opera. And we bring professional singers, really high standard singers, um, to Devon. And we do 
a performance a year. This year we're doing Tosca. We're doing three performances of Tosca in September. Um, and we try and go around Devon. So we're doing one in Exeter, one in Dartmouth and one in Plymouth. Um, and uh, that's really exciting. And certainly that is something I inherited from my dad. As I did glass, the love of glass, I've got a lot of glass. And the paintings, well, they, they, they represent a collection over many, many years. You know, we started when we were first married. Um, and yes, I've, it's, it's a great, I love it, actually. I love it. And I love the fact that I can wander around, which I do quite often in the morning, look, and I remember where we got them. And so it, it, it's a link with uh, my husband, really. And uh, I do have some favourites. Um, this one up here, this uh, the fishing scene. Mm -hmm. We thought we had made a huge discovery. He's a very famous artist, and we thought we'd found this um, painting. And uh, my husband wrote to the museum in Spain, and it turned out to be a student a copy, you know, preparing. And there is, it's part of a much bigger picture that he did and was exhibited last summer at the Royal Academy, but it's not by Sorolla, the artist, it's by a student of his. So that was our, you know, we thought we had discovered something, but we hadn't. <laughs> Do you think that your Czech heritage influenced your life? Oh, I think so. I think so. Um, and it, interestingly, it's interested my daughter. She She's very, very similar. A, she looks like me and, and um, she has inherited her love of the arts and music. Um, but I think, um, I think, I mean, literature, yes, you know, Good Soldier Schweik, I've read <laughs> lots of times. Um, so I think it will always be there. I can't, I can't imagine not being there. My son, who's much more like his father, um, and he was the eldest one. When I used to go and support him for, for things and I'd get overexcited, he'd say, she's not English, you know. He'd say to, say to his friends, she behaves like that because she's not really English, you know. <laughs> so I got a, yes, I, I, I feel that, um, I, I feel it's a very important part of, of who I am, yeah. The next episode of Children of Heroes took us all the way to Exeter in Devon, where we interviewed Madame Antoinette Foreman, daughter of Flight Sergeant Karel Mazurek. The next episode of Children of Heroes took us all the way to Exeter in Devon, where we interviewed Madame Antoinette Foreman, daughter of Flight Sergeant Karel Mazurek. The next episode of Children of Heroes took us all the way to Exeter in Devon, where we interviewed Madame Antoinette Foreman, daughter of Flight Sergeant Karel Mazurek.